So what we did last class period was I gave you guys uh, trigonometric functions such as, let's see here, uh, C sine of theta times um, secant of theta. And we said simplify. So the whole purpose of these videos was to rewrite this expression as one single trigonometric, um, one trig single trigonometric expression or as a single number. So we looked at a lot of different, I gave you guys a whole bunch of identities. You have reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and Pythagorean identities. Since neither of these functions are squared, I'm not going to want to use my Pythagorean identities, right? Um, since I'm not dealing with sine or cosine, or tangent or cotangent, I'm not going to want to use my um, quotient identities. But Ryan, when I look up here, I see that I have a sine and I have a secant. Well, I could use my reciprocal identities, right? So the most common thing that students do is say, well, I can do sine as 1 over cosecant of theta, and I can do secant as 1 over cosine of theta. However, by doing both of those identities at the same time, did that help me simplify this? Because if I multiply those, is it now just one nice, pretty trigonometric function? No, no right? So that, there's nothing mathematically wrong that I did, but this didn't help me do anything. So then I want to see, well, rather than um, converting both of them, what would happen if I just maybe changed one of them? So what about this? What if I just did, I left sine as it was, and I just multiplied by sine times 1 over cosine? Well, when I multiply those, I get sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now, that's still two trigonometric identities. However, looking at our quotient identities, what does sine of theta, Sarah, over cosine of theta equate to? Tangent of theta. Good. OK. Now, do I have my expression as one single trigonometric expression? So it's simplified. OK? So that's basically what you guys, that's basically the idea of everything. Um,